I'm Jackie Hughes. I am a business analyst for CDS. And with me today, we have Nancy Kopa. She's a project director for CDS. We have Tony Ruggiero. He's an education analyst, and he also brings his past experience with Delaware's Department of Education. Before I hand it over to Nancy Kopa, um, feel free to post in our chat. Everyone is muted on this call today, but drop questions you have. Tony and Nancy and I might ask some questions. Feel free to just um, drop your answers in the chat and we'll address those as we can. And um, we also plan to ask questions at the very end as well. So, Nancy, I will hand it over to you, Nancy Copa, to um, talk about the history of CEDS. Absolutely. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, before we get started, Jackie, I believe we have a poll for everyone yes. on um, just on your familiarity with CEDS. So if you can go ahead and, and engage that poll, Jackie. Yeah. Great. Um, it's looking like we've got a few responses. I'll give it just about 10, 15 more seconds um, for you to indicate your level of fami familiarity with CEDS. Uh, right now, it's looking like mostly intermediate, and then after that, it's split between novice and expert, so that's good. Um, we will be covering kind of the gamut there over the next three weeks, um, today plus two more. So um, this is great. Okay, <clears throat> if you can close that, Jackie, that'd be great. All right, so just to make sure, because as I said before on the results, it looks like we do have a few novices. Uh, so we do wanna do a little bit of level setting today. So the first piece of it is uh, the history of CEDS. CEDS actually goes back to 2009. So we have been going strong for uh, more than 10 years. And if you look on this graph, I know there's a lot going on here, so I'm not expecting you to absorb everything on here, but I do want you to look in that second column there, version two, and you will notice that there are three little blocks. It looks like the little ABC stacking blocks. That's the indicator that that's when early learning was actually added to CEDS, so way back in 2012, um, so 11 years ago. Since that time, we uh, have been expanding CEDS, as you can see with all the various little icons being added on there. Uh, CEDS is now a P20W standard, and that means that it includes everything from early learning. Um, and sometimes I like to say it's a B20W for the birth because we do have several elements related to gestational age, um, weight at birth, things like that all the way through workforce, including career and technical ed, adult education. Um, we cover everything from children or students to staff to uh, the organization itself. Um, and so, <clears throat> excuse me, basically anything you can think of around um, education and, and helping children towards their educational outcomes, those elements can be found in CEDS. On the next slide, what we're gonna be seeing is, uh, these are some numbers around CEDS. So CEDS is more than just a standard. It is at its most base point, it is a standard. It actually stands for the Common Education Data Standards. And uh, it is community driven. So it's not the CEDS team sitting in a room and coming up with new elements and seeing how we can add to it, that sort of thing. Instead, it's actually you all as the community. So you all are here representing the early learning community. We have folks that represent the K-12, post-secondary, folks that go between all of those. Um, and we come together either through CEDS-led work groups or through your own requests. Um, to talk about how we can expand the standard. So way back in the beginning, we actually had about 400 elements in CEDS. Right now, we have more than 1,800 elements in CEDS. And every element includes a definition. Um, if it's appropriate, it has an option set to find out. Uh, sometimes they have a format or a length, you know, all that metadata that goes along with your data elements. 
Um, and they're all there ready for you all to use. In addition to that, we have several tools in CEDS, some of which we're gonna be going over in the next um, webinar next week and the week after. One of those is called Align. That's where you can align your data dictionary to CEDS and run a number of reports on it. So that's next Thursday. And then the Thursday after that, we're doing one on Connect, which is our tool where you can take a metric, a research question, um, reporting requirements, whatever it might be, and you define out what elements does it require to um, answer that question and how do I put those elements together to do the calculations. Um, so that's, you know, there's more to CEDS. There's in addition to that, we have an integrated data store, which is a physical data model. So it's, it's like a data system itself. You can go and download, you use it. It's already set up and everything using the CEDS definitions. You just load your data in there. And then to get the data out into nice, pretty reports and everything, we have a data warehouse, which is our reporting data store. So it takes all that data from the integrated data store, moves it into nice, neat little packages so that you can easily run analyses and get it out um, to use because that's by and large the entire reason that we're collecting the data, right, is to make sure we can use it to learn from it to make sure things are working appropriately. Uh, on this slide, you'll notice there's a number of numbers. Uh, first and foremost, on the left-hand side, you see the community there. That's what I was talking about, that it's you all, it's the stakeholders. Uh, right now, we have over 3,000 um, stakeholders who are engaging either through the open source community, through our work groups, um, through using the tools. All of that is, is happening there. Um, we do have 43 out of 50 states who have participated in at least one CEDS work group. Last year, we had a work group specifically on early learning, looking at the standard, making sure that it was up to date with what's going on in the field for you all. Um, and that was made up of, uh, state, of your colleagues, folks in the field who participated in doing that review. That second column there is about the standard itself. As I mentioned before, we have 1,804 um, unduplicated data elements. If you count up all the data elements and all their option sets, um, that's that 25,000 number down there. So that's quite a bit. There's a lot of options in there. Um, and then on the right-hand side for that align and connect, like I mentioned before, those tools, right now we have about 4,000 um, accounts. So if you want to create your own align map and upload your data dictionary, if you want to create your own connection, which is that metric or research question, then you need an account. And so right now we have about 4,000, almost 4,400 accounts. And then finally on the bottom right, um, talking about those connections, we do have 1,100 of them. Now, most of those, I will warn you that most of those are private. So you can create your own connection for your own purposes and you don't have to share it publicly. But there are around 200 of them that are shared publicly and there are a number that are on early learning, um, some on K-12, some on post-secondary. And now I am going to actually turn it over to Tony, who is going to talk about um, the benefits of using CEDS for early learning. Thank you, Nancy. And um, so, uh, Nancy, uh, thank you for describing the uh, the uh, what we have in front of us: the elements, the physical data model, align, connect, and the open source community. And as we know in our work over the last several years now that uh, states and organizations do encounter challenges along the way uh, when it comes to knowing uh, what data they have, how to use it, who can use it. And so uh, today we're going to cover some of these, these challenges and how CEDS can help uh, address these 
challenges that we have experienced ourselves uh, when we have uh, worked with states prior to the roles we're in and what we have heard from states and organizations along the way. And I do want to point out that I am saying states and organizations because it's not only states using CEDS. And an example of this is with uh, Connect. And there is, uh, and a great example is the Association of Maternal and Child Health Programs. They have connections in CEDS to help them uh, with the data they need to, to use as information to, to help uh, guide their program. And, one of the, and an example of the connection they have is at what age were children birthed through age five first diagnosed with autism? And so just wanted to point that out. And CEDS is built for uh, uh, early intervention, for early childhood special education, as well as education, which I, I think uh, many of us know. And, and so when it comes to one of the problems that we have often heard is uh, uh, knowing the data we need to collect to meet our federal reporting requirements, our state reporting requirements, or even to answer those critical or essential questions that we have in our states. And critical uh, questions could be policy questions, they could be program questions, questions that are going to support uh, program uh, and policy improvement, and that will support ultimately support child outcomes. And so CEDS is a great start. So Nancy mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the Align tool. So with the Align tool, states and organizations are able to input their data dictionaries, which had their data elements, such as race, uh, the definitions, option sets. Option sets, using the example of race, could be Black, white, Asian, Native American, and so, and then also uh, being able to input the data dictionaries that can help us, that are helping us to take inventory of what we have. And it also, and by doing this, it helps us to address what data do we, not only it helps us to address the data elements we need, but it also provides that opportunity to look at gaps in the data we have. So if we're looking to answer a program or policy question and we need to figure out what we need, then CEDS is a great way to look at those gaps. So taking a look at, at what new data elements do we need to be, an, be able to answer these, these critical questions. And so oftentimes too with there could be assumptions about, oh, we're not collecting a certain data element or data elements. Uh, and so we need to have this new data collection effort to collect these new data elements. But sometimes we assume that we don't have something and going back in the CEDS to look at our data dictionaries to see what we have just to make sure we're not going to create a new effort uh, for no reason at all. So it's providing CEDS by the fact of storing data dictionaries, by the fact of use, uh, and then aligning uh, the, the state or organization's data dictionaries with uh, the common education data standards to see what's in there and how that, uh, that uh, the data dictionary that's been inputted, how that matches up with the standards uh, that have been provided by experts from across the country since the beginning of CEDS. And then as far as uh, addressing consistency and definitions across organizations, so we know that when it comes to integrating data systems, so for those building an early childhood integrated data system, or even sharing data that we may have uh, we, we need to know from all parties or all offices, agencies that are providing data for this integrated effort. We need to know what we have. We need to know the similarities. And when there is similarities in the data that's being collected, what are, how, how are they the same? How are they different in terms of what they're called? 
in terms of the data elements? How are they different or the same in terms of the definitions and option sets? And this provides the, the starting point for us to begin our planning uh, when it comes to integrating data or sharing data across programs and, and then looking at redundancy across collections. So Nancy mentioned redundancy earlier. So there could be uh, there could be uh, op there could be reasons uh, where it makes sense for a redundancy uh, uh, when we're looking at integrate integrated data systems. Uh, but we all but we need to take a careful look at when it makes sense and when it does not. And then also as far as integrated data, it, it this provides a starting point for transparency as well. And we're going to pause there for questions and you can enter them if, in the chat. And then we'll see if anyone has any questions and then we have a question for you. Tony, we have one question in the chat that's just asking about OSD, and that actually stands for Open Source Community, which we'll talk about um, in just a little bit. Uh, but I will go ahead and um, start the poll. That's good with you, Tony. Oh, thank you, Jackie. Excellent. People are responding. Thank you. We'll keep it open for a few more seconds. So far, uh, we have 23% of you or three have an early childhood integrated data system. We have over half are building an ECIDS. Excellent. And we have some folks who are planning to build an ECIDS. That is great news. Uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to submit an answer, we'll keep it open just for a little bit longer. Well, thank you for answering that. So now we have a question for you and I will drop that in the chat. What problems on this list have you encountered or anticipate? Okay, if you have a response or need to think about it, uh, we'd love to hear from you and we'll go ahead and move on to our, uh, to our Oh, Stephanie said all of them. Oh, here we go. Okay, great. Let's see. Not, it, not that it's great you're anticipating all of them, but thank you for responding. Need to know what data to integrate. Lack of program knowledge on ECIDS. One problem with security. And we may have jumped a slide or two. That may have been my fault. One problem with security and privacy, establishing interagency data sharing MOUs. Okay. Not sure what problem this aligns with, but different agencies collect similar information, but option sets may vary. Definitions may also vary. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, JoLynn. Cindy, identifying the funding to do this work. And there's agreement there, Cindy, from Stephanie. Ongoing funding is something we have to manage as well. Absolutely. So thinking about 
not just getting the funding for the build, but also thinking about sustainability and, and enhancements that most likely will be needed. Thank you everyone for your, uh, for submitting responses. And on our next slide, uh, we'll address some more common challenges when integrating data from multiple systems. And, and this was mentioned earlier. So maintaining security and privacy standards when integrating data from different domains, absolutely. And there's an example of using a connection from Washington State where they established, they had four levels of security in place. And what they ended up doing was they identified the data elements that corresponded with a level. So a level uh, could be uh, public information. So that would have been data that was okay to produce in a public format. And then there was confidential data, the data elements that felt under confidentiality, uh, where there was more scrutiny around what was going out. And, and then they had another another level I remember was uh, confidentiality, but where there was a, a, a special process in place to handle those requests that came through for those particular uh, data elements. And, and so that is always something on our minds. As some, it's something that should be on everyone's minds as well, is that security and privacy establishing uh, what the roles and responsibilities are in relation to the data that exists in our data systems. And of course, addressing, as was mentioned in the comment earlier, about people in different organizations or agencies and thinking through how access looks uh, there as well. And we want to implement data, but need to understand what data we need to integrate. So again, going back to uh, uh, to our data dictionaries, looking to see what we have, but also thinking about, and, and probably even a first or initial look, uh, one of the initial steps anyway, is establishing what is the data needed for. And so it is, about what is required from a federal or state standpoint, uh, what is needed from a policy and program standpoint in terms of those critical or essential questions. Uh, CEDS can certainly help with that as we build out connections and identify within those connections what data elements are needed. And then our program areas don't integrate data for reporting and so CEDS, there could be many reasons for this. We know there are silos uh, that exist. And so, and uh, CEDS is a, a great way not only to be organized, but to have transparency about data coming in. So I think that in order to uh, overcome these silos or help overcome the silos we have and to have people be more comfortable than being able to share what data we have within the programs that are in discussion around sharing data or integrating data is a good way to go. It's a safe place. We're not sharing the actual data. We're sharing the metadata, the data about the data and what it means and what we have. And that's always a good start. And it's a great way to build trust and confidence in, in each other and in the work that uh, we're hoping to accomplish. And then we need to build our ECIDS, but need help with how to best set it up. This is where uh, uh, the physical data model that Nancy talked about earlier can be helpful. This is where the open source community can be helpful. The open source community is a, uh, a wonderful uh, group of people that are sharing information. It helps people not to reinvent the wheel. People provide tips and, and their know-how in terms of uh, how to build, how to uh, how to construct or think about constructing a data system, and all the way to the open source community being able to provide uh, their critique about uh, 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 proposed data elements that are coming into new versions of CEDS. 
And so we'll pause there just to see if anyone has any questions or any thoughts they would like to submit in the chat. Tony, we had a few comments come in, um, some surrounding option sets. And um, so I think the open source community, we might touch on those um, here in just a few minutes. Um, someone mentioned changes across staff resources, shifting levels of buy-in. And I do see the uh, so changes across staff resources, shifting levels of buy-in. Uh, in terms of the option sets, the QRIS system for rating pre-K and childcare has changed. Yeah, I know that seems to happen quite frequently. When I was in Delaware, I know when the QRIS was being built and then uh, it were developed and then changes were made soon after that. Uh, but we'll use the same scale. So how do we draw that line for the change in methods? And this is something that I think this would uh, certainly, this discussion would have to involve your team. Uh, and so, and we could, um, but I think there's a lot to consider there, especially using CEDS. That if C, I think CEDS will provide an opportunity to map that out. And, and take a look at those changes and be able to provide that, uh, that starting point for those conversations. And so common problems when managing data stewards and data governance and we often, uh, we, and we do know that uh, we need to ensure uh, data stewards have the knowledge and skills to be successful and thinking in terms of not only current data managers where CEDS provides that opportunity to document what you have and to be able to go in and find it quickly in terms of the data that exists, uh, what it means, and being able to share that out for those who are asking. And, and especially thinking about people who are requesting data. So a request may come in and somebody may need a more understanding about what is contained in the data system. And this is a, a starting point for those, for that communication with people who are requesting data, whether they're from, whether they're a legislator, they're uh, from the general public, uh, whether they're, um, a researcher or an evaluator, that that information is right at the fingertips of those who are overseeing or working with the data. And then also being able to sustain data governance. And we do know there is turnover and CEDS is a great data governance tool. And it is an opportunity to uh, document what is uh, what exists in an organization or state, but it, and it's also a way to not only document and 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 it be and keep on top of the data that exists, but it's also a way to help data governance boards or committees to have those priority questions, those essential or critical questions in front of them, and so as staff change or administrations change with those priority questions they can remain intact and on everyone's mind as something that needs to be accomplished so when people are leaving that institutional knowledge isn't going away and whether they're a data manager analyst or if they're on the data governance board or committee itself and then also ceds uh, in terms of documentation. So being able to track why we collect these elements, and we know that that answer or response of, we are collecting for a federal report or a requirement or a state requirement, isn't always enough. And so there's been a uh, movement toward, uh, and what we've seen in early Part C early intervention and Part B 619 early childhood special education 
is uh, states are using data to drive or make informed decisions uh, to support the improvement in child outcomes. And so when we think about the why, going beyond federal and state reporting is key because we need to engage stakeholders who are not within our uh, offices or agencies. We need to engage parents. And so it is critical that we have the why this is important. Why? And, and because people are spending a lot of effort getting this data in. And when we can demonstrate that we're using data to make these informed decisions, then that, that helps people to understand they want to use the data. And even just as importantly, if not more importantly, people then see the, they connect that importance to data quality, which we all know is important if we're going to analyze and use our data. And with that, we'll pause for any questions or thoughts. Okay, so we'll move on to common problems when helping stakeholders use data. So uh, we know that a problem is defining reporting requirements uh, can take a lot of time and resources. And we acknowledge that, and we know that CEDS can help to alleviate this time that is needed it is intensive work, and the the benefit is of getting this done up front is uh, of documenting the data you have, the documenting your critical questions. Is that it, and as we already talked about, it, it helps with turnover, it helps alleviate the learning curve for those who are coming in, but it also provides that opportunity to be proactive and not reactive as things surface or come up. So whether it's how to provide the uh, security or what level of security should, should somebody have as we talked about uh, earlier, it, it, or having that, or knowing what data exists immediately when those discussions around planning and ECIDS are coming up or what data is needed as programs are building their data systems. And so just documenting everything uh, is key because it, it'll be effective in the long run and more efficient. And then looking at, uh, and we know people, there are struggles with data requests coming in and they're coming in from a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of people coming from a, a varied background of audiences. So being able, and CDS can provide that opportunity to document that through a connection uh, of what that process will look like and, and how to address that process uh, depending on the role of somebody coming in, whether it's a researcher or a general public. And then our agency doesn't use ECIDS for critical reports. And this could be uh, because the, uh, so from a federal and state perspective, an ECIDS uh, may not be needed. But when we're talking about critical reports here, we're talking about answering sophisticated policy and program questions that do require an integrated data system. So if we want to uh, be able to best serve our children and families, and we are planning or we have an integrated data system, we can then think about more sophisticated questions to answer in terms of providing that support for uh, those who we serve. And with that, just a, a final pause to um, see if anyone has any thoughts or comments or questions. So we have uh, David, we use a centralized data request process for all data requests. They select in a cognito, for cognito form, that is essential selecting CEDS data elements. This is then sent to our project management system, Azure develops and creates a work item. This allows us to track what data requests need to become the next dashboard. Oh, excellent.
Okay, I think we are ready for governance. Okay, thank you, Tony. That's great. All right, let's talk about data governance. So CDS is a P20W national data standard. Um, Nancy mentioned this a little bit at the beginning, but that short phrase is full of information. CDS is comprised of rich and ever-expanding elements um, that go from birth all the way to workforce. Um, it also includes extras like credentials, um, assessments, and facilities. So we are a data standard. We are national, we're funded through the National Center for Education Statistics. Um, and because of that, it makes CDS the go-to standard when looking for elements. Um, Nancy showed you the slide with all the numbers. Um, our data dictionary contains over 24,000 standard elements and options. And it also contains a robust vocabulary for data connection, data storage, and also for data use. Um, so now let's talk about how CDS um, is stakeholder driven and um, how we are transparent. So my favorite part about CDS is our open source community, uh, fre frequently referred to as kind of already mentioned in the webinar. Um, that is what um, we call the OSC. So it stands for the open source community. Um, so you might be wondering, how did 24,000 elements end up in our data dictionary? And that's from people like you all, the stakeholders. Every proposed element, option set addition or change is documented in our open source community. It's for everyone to view, for all of you to comment on and influence. So the stakeholders, again, you all, are who drive what happens inside CDS. Um, we're open source, literally anyone can propose changes and anyone can comment on those proposals. Um, Nancy's gonna drop a link in the chat to the open source community. Feel free to explore that while I'm talking. Um, there's a search feature, so you can um, type in keywords or um, anything that you want to see that might be proposed in um, the open source community at this time. Uh, JoLynn, I, you mentioned um, different agencies require similar things, um, and but the options are different. So you can look at CDS to see what existing elements we have, but also this is where we need the stakeholders, where you all can propose new option changes to modify elements and to adapt to new reporting requirements. Okay, so who decides? You all decide. In December, um, we wrapped up our early learning work group. That group worked for seven months and submitted 206 tickets to the open source community. And that resulted in over 150 new or changed elements um, in our version 11 release. So today I just wanted to take a few minutes to share a few examples from our open source community um, and how they relate to the early learning environment and to kind of paint a full picture for you all of how this space um, can be used by stakeholders for you all to collaborate with each other, to improve your education data, um, and to get that help from the early learning community as you all do work on your ECIDS. So my first example is teen parent. The early learning work group had a conversation um, and determined that we needed an element in CDS that captured a teen parent. Um, the ticket was submitted to the open source community. If you clicked the link that Nancy uh, sent you, you can type in um, teen and it should pop up. Um, but the work didn't stop there. So someone, the work group submitted the ticket for teen parent, and then we had to have conversations and decide what factors um, do we need to consider when adding this element. So we needed to decide if it was an indicator element. We needed to look at the point of view and its data use. So um, we drilled down that this element needed to be an indicator, and what that means is that it needed to be a yes, no. Are you a teen parent, yes or no? Um, and then we kept the conversation going and trying to determine if, um, yes, it's an indicator, did we need to capture the parent's age in order to gather this information? Um, what is What was the data used for this? And as our conversations continued, we realized, no, we didn't need the parents, necessarily the parent's age. We wanted this to be flagged on the child because then the data use comes in. Research shows that being a child of a teen parent can affect your educational outcome. So this one little proposal for this element um, turned into these great conversations. And this is just a kind of a quick, small example of how um, an el element proposal works and just how we, the thought process and the conversation that happens um, in order to determine what we add to our open source community. 
And my next example, I'm going to discuss our early childhood program enrollment type. So this, you all might uh, be familiar with this term. Um, but first, let me take a quick step back and explain that um, the open source community, um, this issue in the open source or open source community is different from the teen parent status because early childhood program enrollment type is an element we have right now in our, um, our data dictionary or what we sometimes call the DES. Um, so Nancy's gonna drop the link to this element. If you wanna click into um, this element and read about it, this is gonna pull up the element that's in our data dictionary. Pause for a second. So if you click into the element, you'll see it pop up and you can see that this element has an option set. So on the left hand side of my screen here is a snapshot of what the proposal looks like inside our open source community right now. So the, the first um, proposal was from the early learning um, work group, one of the committees. They were working on a Head Start connection and said, oh my gosh, we're missing migrant Head Start. We need to add that to this existing element, early childhood program enrollment type inside CDS. And then if you navigate to the right hand side, I added a screenshot that just shows you the comment thread on this ticket. So this example is showing you how a stakeholder requested five additional options be added to this element. Um, and so this is where you, the stakeholder, can comment and collaborate with others inside the early learning space, but also in the broader P20W space inside CDS. Because this particular example shows um, a stakeholder this is actually Mississippi's Department of Education outside of the early learning environment. And then they go on to tell you that they'd like to add these five option sets to early childhood program enrollment type because Mississippi likes to collect the prior care um, environment of a student that's enrolling in kindergarten. So again, this example just kind of shows you the engagement and collaboration that happens inside the open source community. And this particular ticket is benefiting K-12 and also early learning. Um, so our CDS community, you all the stakeholders work together and you help CDS evolve. And lastly, um, how can you join these work groups? I've referenced the early learning work group a lot. Um, we have work groups going on right now. Um, one in particular I'd like to point out is the staff employment work group. Anyone can join our CDS work group. So um, feel free to drop into a work group meeting. You don't have to contribute. You can simply just listen in. Um, but our staff employment work group um, started because states came to the CDS community and said, we need help expanding the CDS data warehouse to handle K-12 staff and employee positions. Um, and then as we started talking to the states that requested this, it was it's this work group is specifically related to jobs offered at the LEAs and open positions um, and how the credentials relate to those positions and credentials related to the staff that are filling those positions and it goes on and on. Um, but it was brought to us from states and then we figured out a way to get the work group going and um, to help support them. So they're doing all the work. We're just there to provide the space for the conversation. Um, this would be a great uh, work group to join. The, um, anyone can join in and listen, as I stated. Um, the discussion in this work group is really engaging. Um, and it's, it's stakeholders that are state agencies and also outside organizations as well. And this is just a screenshot of some elements that they've already proposed to add to um, CDS. And lastly, you decide. It's our stakeholders like you that drive what happens in C inside CDS and where, and you all determine the stakeholders where we go next. So if you're checking out the open source community or you're looking at our work groups and you don't see a hot topic that's covered, um, submit a ticket to the open source community. Email us at cds.gov um, and we will work with you to gather stakeholders. Um, we can help you form a work group. Um, we can help guide those conversations. Um, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Nancy Copa because she's gonna talk about how you can find out more information about all the different work groups we have. Thanks, Nancy. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so Jackie mentioned there's all these work groups, there's an open source community, but how do you actually get involved? Where do you go? Um, on this next slide, what we want to show you is the uh, calendar 
And this is available, <clears throat> excuse me, in our community. And there we go, there's our calendar. Uh, you can see that there's quite a few meetings happening this month. This was just in July this month. The calendar looks pretty much like this every month with quite a few happening there. That staff employee work group that Jackie mentioned, you can see it's labeled there on the 12th um, and the 26th. So it's coming up next week. So if you're interested in joining, you can actually do that. Um, you can also see on there, we've got the second early learning webinar, the one where we're going to be actually doing hands on um, with the Align tool. And we also have our Workforce Standards Work Group and Workforce Connections Work Groups meeting next week. So there's definitely lots of places to get involved. The other two that I want to mention on here, you see at the very top of July there, um, the first one happens the first Monday of every month. The second one happens the first Tuesday of every month. So the first one, the OSC monthly review meeting, is uh, where the CEDS team gets together with anyone who wants to join the meeting, kind of goes over what tickets have been submitted, which ones are uh, close to being approved, which ones need some other stakeholders to join in the conversation to have proposals. Uh, so that's a good one. If you're just looking for somewhere to start and figure out what's happening in CEDS, that's the one I would recommend that you join. The one on that Tuesday, the stakeholder use case meeting, we have a number of states who are very prolific in uh, submitting tickets to the uh, open source community because they are working with CEDS and they need to expand it to fit some of their use cases. Uh, part of the process, once you submit an open, uh, open source community ticket, is that you then need to get together with stakeholders and develop out a, a, an official proposal for that ticket. So that's what that meeting is. Those states wanted to get together, kind of go through the tickets that they've been submitting and already have a set of stakeholders there that can talk through them and help them with their proposals. Anyone, just because those states requested it, doesn't mean it's just closed to them anyone can join that meeting as well. So if you want to find out what's going on, I encourage you to attend the first Monday of each month. If you want to hear a little bit further into the process, like what happens after you actually submit the ticket, I encourage you to join the first Tuesday of each month. Um, and on the next slide, we're going to actually show you <clears throat> excuse me, how you uh, get involved. So Jackie's going to drop a link in the chat for you that is um, a link to the CEDS community. Now, here's the fun thing about CEDS. We're giving you all these links, right? CEDS, the main one you need to know is the one we gave you at the very beginning, CEDS.ed.gov. Um, from there, we have two sites for the open source community. One is GitHub, which is an open source uh, repository. And it's where it's already set up and everything, and it's where all the tickets live. The other one is the conversation piece, um, where you can find out about events, things like that. And so that is that one on the left-hand side, which corresponds to the link that Jackie just um, dropped in the chat for you. So, and um, as we're getting to the questions, which is about to come up, that section, uh, we'll actually drop in the chat for you a link to CEDS resources. It's got all of these links in it in one single document. So it'll be a little bit easier so you don't have to keep up with which one was which. Um, but just in case you were wanting to follow along, we did wanna show you that. So with that in mind, the one on the left-hand side, you can see the in the bottom left corner of that screenshot, there's a block with some red blocks in it. That's the calendar. Those red blocks are dates that we have meetings happening. So if you're looking to join any of those meetings, that's where you want to go. You find the appropriate meeting you want, and within there is a link to join the meeting. So um, that's how you find out how to get into that Teams meeting. <clears throat> and then the right-hand side is a screenshot of all the repositories that we have. We've been talking about the Elements one. Early on, we mentioned the integrated data store. That is housed in that uh, top left one on the right-hand side. We mentioned the data warehouse. It's in the bottom right on the um, on that side. And then uh, for those of you who are using cloud technology, we do have data warehouse in Parquet. Uh, and so that's also available. 
And then finally, that one in the middle there on the left-hand side is a collaborative exchange. What this is, is if you have your use case available in data warehouse and you have written a script to actually extract it and run the calculations, you can put that script out on the collaborative exchange and anyone using the CEDS data warehouse would be able to grab that, apply it and run it using the data in their system. So it's a way to give back to the community um, as you are also getting from the community. So we wanted to make sure to point those things out to you. And at this point, I know um, even if you are an expert on CEDS, we still probably um, inundated you with quite a bit of information here. So we do want to pause. And I think on the next slide, we have our questions um, slide. So we want to pause and see if there's any questions from anyone. And I think you have to drop them in the chat because microphones are muted or un disabled or something, right? <clears throat> okay, um, not seeing any questions at the moment. So I have a question for you all. Um, if you learned at least one thing today about CEDS, if you can go up to your reaction bar at the very top there, um, and just click the raise hand, or you can click a reaction. Um, so if you learned anything today at all, just go ahead and click a reaction. Awesome, I'm, I'm loving the choice of reactions that you all are picking. Um, good. Okay, Jackie, I will turn it back over to you because it looks like folks are not having questions in particular. Okay, thanks, Nancy. Um, we appreciate you all coming today. If you still have questions, if we um, overwhelmed you with information, um, email us at cvs.ed.gov. If you'd like a one-on-one -on -one demo of CVS, we are happy to do that. Um, but we also have two more webinars coming up. And as Nancy mentioned, um, next Thursday, we have our um, building a data dictionary, and this is going to be hands on. We, it will not be full of uh, us talking, but you are going to be assigned to an align map and we're going to work um, together to align elements. Um, so Nancy's dropped the link to that webinar. And then we have our third webinar. Um, on August the 3rd, and that's going to be about determining the question for your ECIDS. Um, we have someone from the early learning um, environment coming who's worked on connections before, um, and she's going to be speaking, and we're also going to do a hands-on activity there too um, to get you all into the CDS tools and use them. Um, I'm going to check the chat one more time to make sure we don't have any questions. Thanks, Nancy, for dropping those links to register if you aren't registered yet. Um, and again, reach out to us at cds at ed.gov and we'd love to help you. We appreciate everyone coming today and hope you have a good rest of your week. Thanks.